Hello and welcome back to Scar World Season 2. Today we are flying through the shopping district. As you can see, that's my clock tower there. And we are going to spend most of this episode in the shopping district. If I don't die when I land. <laughs> yes, so this episode we are going to make a cool new shop right down there. And I am so excited to get started on this project. I have worked out a lot of kind of the mechanics behind it in the uh, test world. But, you know, in a test world, you got more space to work with. And uh, I don't know that I can fit everything in of the space available to me. So we will see. Now, the basic shop itself, the, the main gist of it, oh, sounds like uh, noon. <laughs> oh, did we miss the fireworks? Awesome. So, uh, I know that the dimensions of the shop, the main uh, attraction of the shop, will fit but there are a lot of redstone things that i want to accomplish that i just don't know that i have the space to accomplish them in so we're going to see we're going to see what we're going to be able to pull off but the main thing is uh it's going to fit so that's i know i can get away with what kind of what i'm wanting to do so we're going to start off this episode with a quick time lapse of digging a hole <laughs> because this has got to go. Alright, so what's next is really the hardest part of this project, and that is that is fitting in some redstone basically right here. So the entire kind of meat of the shop is going to be the, the confines here, the yellow and black. Uh, minus two. So this, I have a, a two spaces here that are kind of spare, and maybe I can move over if I need to. And that might be what I have to do. I might have to put the kind of the storefront off to the side so that I have room to redstone. But the attraction, the shop boundaries, is going to be 14 by 14, and that should be here to the back which was like literally the mouse base I had. And then over to right here. And that's why we need that big old pit. But we got some redstone to do. And on my test world, it took three wide, but I didn't really try to get it down to two wide. And so we could potentially have, we're, we're just going to say a payment chest right here. And, uh, surrounding blocks but this is the wall and so i'm really only one wide and then what i can sardine under the road and if i can pull it off under the road i can do it right here you can just come right up to it interact with any kind of chests and then walk away so i'm gonna goof around a bit here off camera and kind of see what I can pull off. And if I if I can't get what I want done cleanly over here, I'll probably do it over here. 
and I think that this would be fine as well. And I'll come back when I have something working, the, 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 the prelim, so that I can show you guys. I mean, I'm, I'm purposely not talking about what I'm doing. And once I get it working, then I will I'll come back in and show you guys what I'm what I'm doing. And immediately after hitting <laughs> stop on the record, I got visited by uh, Inspector Bob, and just about one shotted me. I've, I've already eaten back up a bit, but wow! I hit I hit stop on the record, and I turned, and he was right next to me. <laughs> Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> I need to get down there and light that up. Okay, yeah. All right, let me uh, let me get to it before I before I blow up the shopping district. All right. Well, welcome back. I'm taking a little tour around the uh, shopping district here and giving my girl uh, a little bit of exercise. I wanted to show you the progress we've made. Yeah, all right, sweetheart, take a rest. That's that's enough exercise for now. Eat the grass, even though you don't think you really digest it. <laughs> so there has been a ton of progress made, and I just wanted to bring you guys in and, and show you what how what all has gone on. And uh, you know, I was being a little coy earlier about what this is, but I. I'm sure the thumbnail is already given away, but you know this this shop is going to be a giant enclosed fountain, and uh, it's going to be really interesting when it's done. But there's also a lot of redstone going into it, and I wanted to show you that there's there's going to be two ways of buying items from here. Now there's going to be a standard shop version of you know. A chest with stuff in it that you can just take the stuff out, put your diamonds in, and walk away with the amount that you expect. Or you can kind of gamble and probably get more. And that's what the redstoning that I was talking about earlier, I was concerned about whether I could pack it all in, was about. And I have packed it all in, so I am very happy with this. So we have what will be the payment chest. The the person will stand up here. The glass will be replaced with probably street. <laughs> and uh, in here, they'll dump in their diamonds. And what I've done is I've I've taken the idea of a filter and changed it to suit a, a different need. And I've seen other people use systems that do this kind of function, though I've never actually seen how they accomplish it. So I kind of had to reinvent the wheel. And... Basically, we have our standard filter, which in the future, these will be diamonds, not stone. Down in the belly of this, we have a lot of redstone that takes time to activate. And if all the diamonds get sucked through quickly, then they won't get counted. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want anyone to get shortchanged. I've set up this mechanism. So normally, right, you detect this, the signal. It goes it gets stronger from an item falling into it. And it goes off normally to the unlocker. In this case, it goes off downstairs to activate all the machinery, but it also boomerangs right back and locks this hopper so that when it gets one item, it locks and doesn't take another item. And that way, it won't take more diamonds until it's ready for them. So we're going to throw in what would be a diamond. And you took it and You'll see it'll unlock in a moment. There it unlocked. So the item's gone. The diamond would be gone. And you see we start to receive items. This is the stuff that the person would purchase. I'm not selling dirt and granite. These are just example. And you see it came in 20 and 14. That's something that I can manipulate, how many come in. But if we had jumped a bunch of stone diamonds in here, you can see it didn't take all of them. It's waiting until it has time to process them. So let's go downstairs. I know, right? Going downstairs, I'm going the wrong way. That would seem true, right? I just jump in the hole and it takes me downstairs. Well, that would work. 
for now because, you know, eventually it's going to be sealed. Or if we go to our staff only room in our other shop, what do we have here? We have a ladder that goes into a basement, which goes to a cart, which has a button. That's right, I made a path. <laughs> or a tunnel between my two shops. Now, I wasn't just being cute. This is going to be sealed, and getting down here would not be simple. And I need to be able to get down here to stock the items. So, as I mentioned, this is a fountain. And one of the things that's going to happen is that there's going to be items circulating in the fountain. And of course, an item that's left out in the world for five minutes, even if it's in water, will despawn. And we don't want anything to despawn. So we need the items to flow into other storage, in this case, hoppers. And they will just go to the side and come out and recirculate. And they rotate so that they come out at different angles. As far as the shop goes, down here you can see we took a lot of space and we have what you probably recognize as a randomizer, because right now it's at 100% because we're testing. But if it goes off, it sends a signal into a pulse lengthener, pulse extender, which then pushes an observer into another observer, causing it to drop a set amount of items. And we have two floors of that. And again, we can manipulate how many items come out by changing the pulse length. You can see this is a smaller one. But I have a bunch more to do, so I'm going to hop back on that. And I will bring you guys back in for an update when I have uh, more to show you. So close to completion. Just about done. <laughs> and need to, to show you all the stuff before it's kind of inaccessible <laughs> so the walls are in and the top of the fountain is in and the water column is in and the manual entrance that may or may not be something I can keep in here the resupply is all set up and I need to put you know things in the pictures to remind myself what what each one of these supplies. The whole point of this setup is that I can manipulate how much is given out and the odds of it. So for example, this one I will probably lengthen it more so it gives out more than 20, but then I will reduce the odds of it triggering. So. Uh, I can manipulate that and I can do it based on what products I have, you know, so I can change. But the point is that I have it set up to where I have one thing that supplies three. I have one that's not supplied by anything because this is going to be the special one that I'll just manually put things in the nine hoppers. And so there'll be a one in nine chance of what you get and probably a one in nine chance whether or not it triggers at all. Because <laughs> I'll put things in here like Wither Skulls and Nether Stars and whatnot. You can see it's all cleaned up. All cleaned up. Everything is like, it's. there's no regular stone or garbage or anything. Every angle, everywhere. This took so long to do. But, you know, if you've been watching my videos, you know I, I, like, a, I like clean redstone. I like the areas to be clean. Like even behind the chest. It's all cleaned up. And this is going to be the payment barrel where all payments go. And this is the top. And this is kind of the theme I went with, or the, yeah, the palette. I thought it looked pretty nice. And this is going to look cool when it's done. Just trust me on it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, stuff will pop up over and flow down. This can't be fancy. I mean, I could put fancy blocks in it, but it's got to be this simple straight up because the water has to flow a specific way. And I went with iron, at least for now, because iron's going to be the primary product I'm selling. And it kind of makes it look like a pipe. But, uh, you know, subject to change. Who knows? 
and I, I did the little bushing thing, which this will make more sense once I build up the the front and the sides. And the payment has been shifted to diamonds. There's there's no product in here at the moment, but uh, it's doing its job properly. And in the back, we have a dispenser, which you can probably guess is going to have fireworks. So whenever someone makes a purchase, it will fire off fireworks. Assuming I have time, I'm going to show you uh, <laughs> some clips of what I'm bringing because the fountain isn't just going to be for items. <laughs> Otherwise, it would just be one tall. So let's get to uh, let's get to bringing in all the stuff that is going to populate the fountain. All right, approaching the Nether portal with my first two candidates. Hey, little guys. Come on through. What's the odds that this goes smoothly? <laughs> this might not work. <laughs> All right, let's go to first person, not to piggy butt view. <laughs> and shopping district. Come on, guys. Come on. I know you don't like to go on rails. Release and press go. Hey, hey. You're next. All right. I'll need to return these cards because this is going to make the uh, train yard kind of lopsided. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> I think probably gonna stick with just one llama. I don't want this to get too out of hand, <laughs> and uh, it gets a little crowded down there. And also, I guess now I can explain why I made this so deep, and is because I wanted it to be far enough down that the sounds of these guys doesn't spam the area. It's supposed to be 16 blocks away, I believe, that you can hear mob sounds. And that's about a 20 block drop. And I'm <laughs> pretty sure they won't take any damage when they land in the water. But that's the whole point. Is, you know, There's going to be more animals below ground than are up here. And they're only going to be up here briefly. And I don't want an entire farmyard of noise. You know, just annoying people in the shopping district. So that's why I had to dig this so deep. Is uh, to kind of muffle the sound. Still, oh, someone changed the... Oh my goodness, I'm glad I checked that. Someone changed the door, <laughs> the place. I would have sent them to the Wither with Skeleton Farm. With their, with their Skelly Farm. Alright. Come here, come here. I brought several carts back, by the way, in my pre previous return. As many as I could carry. <laughs> Remember this place? <laughs> yeah. So now the fun begins. The animals were a cakewalk. Could you please not walk on the edge of the lava drop? Get down there. Nope, nope, I don't want to trade. Get in the boat. Oh, this is... Oh, I hate villagers. Stop! God. I might have to make another episode. Just with all the time spent doing this. Shot part two. The capturing of the villagers. Alright. Let's go. I want to make sure nothing can accidentally jump back out. So we're going to get one higher ring around the sides. Uh, 
I'm going to take a look at that action right there. So first is going to be the most expendable, <laughs> which will be, I guess, a pig because it doesn't have a color, right? So let's, um, do I let all of them go when I do this? Uh-oh. All right. Give me the leads. Be a guinea pig, not just a regular pig. And hopefully he will survive the fall. <laughs> um, you know what I should do? All right. Let's bring him across first so I can reclaim my lead. And I can just nudge him off. <laughs> go, buddy, go. Give me the lead. Thank you. All right. Test case. No problem. All right. We knew that, right? We, we knew that was going to work. So, let's uh, let's get to adding all these guys. I thought we lost the, the red guy there. Welcome to your new forever home. Now, my hope is that I can attract them with their workstation. Oh, this is looking so good! Oh, I'm so smart. Bye bye. Fletcher's got a fletch. Man, that worked out. Just it, it, it worked. It went to plan. <laughs> Just I'm speechless. It actually worked the way it's supposed to. <laughs> All right. No, what happened? Did he take damage falling down? Oh no! Oh, I don't understand. Okay, uh, let's go get another one. Actually, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. Um, no. In case you take damage falling, I need to. I need to start this up and finish it and finish what we're doing later. Move, move, move. I think if I break these, they will turn to water, but it's always... I think it's just if there's air underneath the water, underneath the ice, then they don't turn into water, so let's test one. All right, it worked. Never mind. I don't need these torches. You know, the, the guy died. Look how high it goes. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, that's... <laughs> Uh, a little bit of an early reveal, but uh, uh, oh, prices! <laughs> All right, I just need to put something up here to see if they're hitting it, because I don't want to. Yes, I, I think he bounced off of it. I don't want uh, to shorten the the height of the flight, because that's that's the comical part. Oh wow, that really came up. <laughs> okay, I think I think we're good. I think we're good on our height. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go get me another red sheep because I want one, and I think that they're safe now. And uh, and then we'll we'll build up the walls and the and the roof and uh, stock the shop. Let's get done. Uh, you didn't think I was gonna leave chickens out, did you? Hehehe. <laughs>
done. It's done. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to have this done. It was a lot more work than I expected, but it was absolutely worth it. Look at that. Look at it. <laughs> That's so great. I love watching this. And the the dome came out perfect. Just everything I wanted when I was building it. So the idea behind the dome is that, and, and kind of the attraction itself, is that this is meant to be like an attraction in the middle of a mall. If you're familiar with, you know, malls, especially here in the U.S., usually there's some kind of center point where, you know, the the different hallways of the mall all intersect and there's something big in the middle. There might be a giant fountain, there might be a, a carousel, there might be, you know, a little kid's area or something like that. That's what this is meant to be. This is You're not meant to be able to interact with this. You can't go inside. And it's meant to be an attraction like in the mall. And, and to that point, that's why the dome is so exact. Because these aren't meant to be real trees. It's meant to be, you know, kind of a faux tree. It's supposed to pretend to be the outdoors. Which is exactly what you would see in a mall. You know, these are plastic trees with plastic leaves. And it blends in with the area because all of the dark oak that was already around and trees and everything. So it blends in just beautifully. And it just it came out perfect. And I'm so happy with it. And I added, you know, a chest up here for direct purchase of iron. There will probably be a chest up here at some point for kelp once I have enough. You know, it takes a long time to make all that kelp. And I have it, you know, I want to make sure that the randomizers are stocked first. And I, you know, I, I filled out the, a book explaining the iron shop. If you want to read this, you can pause it. But it's it's basically you know what it is, and the the outcomes and the potential outputs, and those can change. But yeah, we're gonna toss a couple of diamonds in here, and the firework launcher. I had to move it from the back over here to the front because you couldn't see it. It wasn't rendering. I don't know if it was just because of the glass, but you, you couldn't actually see them fire. So I brought it up front. Look at that. Oh, that's so beautiful. And, uh, oh, look, we, we, we got a, a special, <laughs> we got a special win. So that's one of the specials. And, uh, we got a little low on the iron, uh, and we got a bunch of firework rockets. I only had six on me. So yeah, I mean that was a pretty good, pretty good haul. You know, it's for a couple of diamonds, a bunch of firework rockets, and a bunch of dried kelp, and a chicken head. <laughs> so that chicken head could have been any number of other special things that are not listed, but that includes diamonds, diamond blocks, nether stars. There's a bunch of random stuff. There's even enchanted gear. So you know, it's supposed to be worth, you know, the diamond, but. That's it for this episode. We're going to wrap it up. We're out of time. <laughs> I hope you guys find this as enjoyable and as humorous as I do, or at least half as humorous, because I really get cracked up over this. And, uh, you know, leave me a comment. If you think this is funny, let me know, because, you know, I have a strange sense of humor. <laughs> Maybe other people don't find this as funny. <laughs> but uh, thanks again for making it to the end of this with me and hanging out, and I really appreciate it. So, uh, you know, if you liked it, leave a like. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. So, thanks for watching.